I'm going to set a list dash style colon none and that will take the bullet bullet items out and I think actually we'll set the padding to zero so I'm going to set a padding colon zero and we'll, we'll space out the images the smaller images using margins so I'm going to set a margin colon and I'm going to set that to zero pixels on the top zero pixels on the right we'll set it to two pixels on the bottom so it'll push the images from the bottom by two pixels and five pixels on the left now press refresh and uh, it looks okay now it looks slightly different on that bottom one there it looks like uh, it, it hasn't moved over correctly but if if we preview that inside of a browser we'll see that it's actually spaced out quite nicely okay so we're looking quite good we're looking very good in fact and uh, we will need to start adding our scripts now that will animate the rotating product tabs okay now I know many beginners have problems setting up script hooks so we're going to type it in manually so that you can manually browse for those files so we're going to go to the top of the head of our document and create a space between our CSS style sheet and the bottom of the head and we're going to type in script space type and we're going to make it text slash javascript we're going to type in src and we're going to browse for our first script so I've just clicked on browse and uh, we're going to go into the javascript file the javascript folder there js folder and we're going to hook up the yeti-min which is a js file and uh, that's set up now I'm just going to close the script off make sure you copy exactly what I'm doing and that has now attached the script to our document okay so if you look up here next to our source and CSS you'll see that there's the script so you know it's definitely attached there that's brilliant okay now what we need to do is uh, I've made a file up a notepad file and that will have a script call and we're going to place a script call just at the bottom underneath the closing unordered list and I'm going to open up the text document called script text and uh, scripts call sorry and we're going to copy the scripts call close down the file and I'm gonna paste that in just underneath the unordered list but obviously still inside our product images div tag now it's a variable and it's searching for the tabs uh, especially if they have an ID of product images and it set it to an interval to rotate at five seconds now it's also looking for the unordered list for the extension of dash nav which is what we applied to that unordered list that's how it's going to synchronize those images so I've attached it and all we have to wait is for that image to swap over and it is doing that every five seconds okay now right now though we don't have any visual clues to say that it's swapping out in our smaller images so we need to create some a rollover effects some hover effects there and we'll lower the opacity and raise the opacity when it's in focus in focus on one of the main images now for the rest of the tutorial I'm going to set the interval to two seconds so I don't have to wait so long for it to swap out those images okay and we'll start creating our hover effects for these smaller images um, so that they'll basically as it rotates it will add a black border to each image uh, that's in focus okay so I'm gonna go into the CSS file and uh, what I'm gonna do is create the rest of the CSS uh, rules that we need and um, the first rule I'm gonna create is for the IMG tags and uh, so it's product images dash nav li IMG open and close curly braces so we're going to target the images inside of the list items and set a border colon one pixel solid pound CCC which is a gray color and press refresh now you'll see inside the design view that it's added those borders around those smaller images so we're starting to get our visual clues already now I'm going to set a margin colon and I'll set the margin to zero I'm going to set the opacity colon and that will be set to an opacity of 0 0.5 so it's going to reduce it down by 50 percent 
So we'll just check that in the browser to make sure that the opacity has been lowered and it has been. So next time we hover over the image, we're gonna set an opacity so that when the main image is uh, in focus, it's gonna raise the opacity on the smaller image and uh, create a nice visual clue there. Um, so we'll go back into our CSS and I'm going to set a pound product images with a capital I dash nav li img colon hover so this is the hover on the image so I'm going to set the border on the hover to one pixel solid pound 333 which is a much darker grey and I'm going to raise the opacity up to we can either make this 1 or 0 0.9 I'm going to put so when we hover over a particular image it's going to add a, a darker border and it's going to raise the opacity on that image so let's preview that in Firefox and hover over one of the images and there we go we can see that it actually brings it further into focus raises the opacity and that looks great okay so I'd like to go back into the CSS now and uh, for our main image when our main image is on show I'd like the smaller counterpart image to also show uh, with a darker border and a raised opacity so we'll target the link tags inside of the unordered list that are active so when it's active and the main image is on show we'd like the smaller image to have an opacity and the opacity is going to be equal to 0 0.9 and uh, we'll set the border colon one pixel solid and that'll be pound free 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 so when it's active when that main image is rotating through we want the smaller image the smaller counterpart image to also show there we go so it's swapping out and it's adding a black border and it's rotating through a great visual clue there to see what product image uh, we are currently on now we still have and retain the hover effect so we can hover over the rest of the images and it will add, also add that border but that's looking great now okay we're looking really good Okay, so far all of these effects have been created using a standard JavaScript file. Now we're going to hook up the jQuery library and we're going to add an image tooltip. So I'd like you to go into the head of the document again and create a space between the CSS file and the last script that we set up. And uh, we'll go back into the files panel and we're going to click on the jQuery library hook. And I want you to copy and paste that code into that area inside of the head of the document. Now this is the Google hosted version, sorry, the Google hosted version of the uh, jQuery library. So now I've pressed refresh and uh, that code has been added as you'll see at the top of the panel there inside of our Dreamweaver page. Now I'm just type in script type and again this will be text and JavaScript I'm going to select the source and we're going to attach our zoomer.js file so I'm going to browse for that file and that will be in the JS folder as well so I'm going to click inside of the JS folder and I'm going to click on the zoomer.js file double click on that I'm going to close the angle bracket and close that script tag off okay so we're going to have to create some extra code inside of our image tags in order to get that preview to work so I'm going to find my first div with an ID of image 1 and uh, I'm going to surround the image tag with a link tag now it's going to be an A tag it's going to be a, a class and the class is going to be equal to preview and that's what the script's going to look for any link around an image with a class of preview now I'm going to create a named anchor and I'm just going to detach my files panel now so I can show you how I'm hooking up this image now the image is in the folder it's along my main site route and it's in uh, a folder called images and the name of the image is image1.jpg so I'm going to type into this name anchor I'm going to type in images slash image one dot jpeg and uh, that has now created an anchor for that image so it will appear as a image tooltip now I'm going to close that image tag off and uh, then that's one completed now once I press refresh 
uh, you'll see that inside of that main image area there's an anchor tag that's the anchor the named anchor that we just created there okay so uh, it's important you get the, the correct file path there for that image to show up because that's how it's going to find it okay now I'm gonna have to do the same for all of my other images and create the same named anchor now it's going to be a, a link with a class of preview and the named anchor is going to be images so the folder look for the folder called images and uh, inside of that images folder is the image2.jpg that I would like you to show in the preview zoomer tooltip and uh, I'm going to create the same one for the image 3 a class equals preview and that will be a named anchor images slash image free dot jpeg and lastly we're going to find the div id image 4 and I am going to create the link tag around the image and it's going to be a class of preview and the named anchor will be images slash image for dot jpeg and I'm going to close that image tag uh, sorry that link tag the a tag off with a closing a okay so we've created that now let's press refresh and uh, that should now animate the tooltip the image tooltip for all of our images they've all been anchored to the correct spot and if I preview that in Firefox we'll roll over the image and see what happens okay so we've got our images appearing but then it's not really in the place we'd like it to be and the images are huge so we'd like to reduce those images down to a more manageable size and uh, I think we'll create a nice little border with a shadow around the image as well so you can see it's appearing at the bottom right hand screen but that's no good to us so we'll go back into our CSS uh, file and we'll start creating some CSS rules uh, for our preview. So that'll be pound preview. Okay, so I'm going to set a background color of a white for uh, the background of our image preview, the tooltip. I'm going to set a border one pixel solid and we'll make it a gray color. So pound CCC semicolon. I'm going to set a padding all around the image, uh, a buffer zone of five pixels, and we're going to set the position to absolute. I'm also going to set um, a Z index to make sure it stays on the very top of everything. So it'll be Z index colon 999. Set a margin to the top and uh, I'm going to set minus 25 pixels. So it'll appear minus 25 pixels from our cursor. I'm going to set a display to none. And uh, so that's in case the, the JavaScript file doesn't load up on any occasion, it won't show that image up automatically and ruin our web page. Now I'm going to set a, uh, a moz border, so dash moz, dash border, dash radius. I'm going to give some nice rounded edges, so I'm going to set five pixels of border radius there. And I'll set a box shadow as well, so dash moz, dash box, dash shadow, colon, five pixels, five pixels, 12 pixels, blur radius and um, we'll set a pound 666 which is a darker grey colour there now uh, for Chrome and Safari you'll have to look up the uh, codes for the border radius and shadow there they are available on my website I have made a tutorial showing you how to do those now I'm set the width of the image that appears to be 600 pixels and that would be a nice smaller image rather than that huge gigantic one that appeared earlier so let's preview that in Firefox now and uh, let's hover over the image and there we go we've got a nice image tooltip a nice zoom effect preview uh, for our products rotator and uh, I think that looks really good with the shadow uh, let's just stop one of the images and preview that there we go we've got a nice shadow there we've got a white background we've got uh, our curved corners it's looking really good Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, image product rotator and tooltip tutorial. Uh, there's plenty more tutorial to come over the course of the year. Um, so if you've liked it, please leave a comment and please rate this video. Um, this has been James from dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and uh, there'll be full written explanation and further opacity settings on my website. So go to dreamweavertutorial.co.uk. 
Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.